Gil, how are you? Hey, Max, I'm doing good. Um, really, really happy to, to be here with you. Thanks. I hope you're being safe. Uh, are you in Tel Aviv right now? I'm not too far from Tel Aviv. Um, I can actually see Tel Aviv from my balcony, but I came for a short visit uh, in Israel as I um, usually I currently live, live in Prague. But um, yeah, I, I live in a small town. It's located uh, like 30 minutes from Tel Aviv on a hill. It's right on the border uh, where the wall of the West Bank um, goes through. So uh, that's where I'm at. It's called Sufim. And it's a very, very, very small town. If you heard of it, you like, and, and you don't live there, so you probably got lost and, uh, and got there. Otherwise, I don't see how would you know about it. Have, uh, um, and I'm, I'm going to ask you a lot of semi-naive questions because I wanted, I wanted to actually have a conversation to learn sure. along with, with a lot of people that I think sure. get, they, they get propaganda from both sides on the, the current conflict between Palestine and Israel. And, and I think it's, I think it's useful to get your perspective on the ground as a, as a libertarian that, um, is also an Israeli citizen. Definitely. And that's what I'm here for. You know, um, when, um, the situation started to, you know, when things get started to, to get out of control, uh, like two weeks ago, I immediately posted on Facebook uh, that anyone who has questions about the, the conflict, about the situation, please, like, you know, just, just, you know, t text me or like uh, write your questions in the comments because I know that it's really hard to get an accurate information from the media. And I'm not saying that the media lies, but I do say that mass media <laughs> doesn't share the whole information and it's really hard to see the big picture that way yeah you know one thing i one thing i observed and it this started with a conversation um i was in guatemala maybe a month ago at something called the antigua forum which is a gathering of of free market thinkers and activists and and someone said to me casually um Oh, well, you you all support Trump now. And this, of course, was even after the election. And I thought it was such a collectivist way to think about an incredibly diverse country with all sorts of political views. And and it absolutely happens when we discuss conflict in the Middle East and, and any war like um, the Israeli people are totally conflated with the Israeli government and Netanyahu. Yes. And, the and the Palestinian people are conflated with uh, the Palestinian government and even Hamas. And it's it's it should be obvious to say that it's incredibly more complicated than that. And of course. And you, you had a statement on one of your Facebook posts that uh, for what is it for every two Jews, there's three opinions about exactly, this. Yeah, it's, yeah it's, a, it's, a, it's a common phrase um, for Jews. You know, I, I would say five opinions, you know, because, yeah, Jews have so much to say about everything so and especially israelis and yeah we are very involved in the situation but i think it's it's as as i previously said it's it's really hard to see the big picture and it's you know when when people think about the conflict usually or some people would think that you know these are two different nations and we are completely separated it's it's not the case um as i said i live uh, right on the border of the west bank um when we usually go shop for groceries uh we go to the palestinian towns and that's you know and 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 my dad has has many friends and and and, and partnerships you know for his business in in those towns so i would say that between people um you know there there is there is not really a war especially nowadays you know it used it it it, it wasn't like that always but it, it is getting better and that's another thing that I think um, uh, the media and, 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 and outsiders tend to miss. You know, there, there is a process going on. It's very slow and it's, it's, it's hard to see. But, you know, eventually there is some kind of, of normalization between people. And, you know, there, there are more trade relations uh, between, between Israelis and Arabs and Palestinians and Jews. So it's, it's much more 
diverse and mixed, you know, then 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 people tend to think about it. And, yeah, it's, yeah. it's amazing how well it functions. And and Terry and I were there in January of last year, um, yeah. one, of the, one of the last trips we we got to do. And let's let's take a step back and and explain a little bit about who you are. Um, I, I think I met you first in uh, Iceland, uh, maybe well, around 2016, was it, uh, at a Students for Liberty conference. Mm -hmm. And at the time, you were the uh, the lead coordinator um, for Students for Liberty in Israel. Right. Was S SFL's, yeah, mm -hmm. SFL's like a, a, a libertarian student organization. Yeah. Um, Talk a little bit about you're you're a lawyer and an activist, and um, I think our first conversation was about reggae, and hopefully we get to that as well. But Definitely. tell tell people a little little bit about yourself. Okay, so uh, you pretty much mentioned uh, most of what I do. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm currently a lawyer. I deal with intellectual property uh, for a living, um, but other than that, I I've been a part of Students for Liberty, uh, which is the the the, the biggest um, libertarian uh, student movement uh, in the world um, since 2014-15. That's when I started to, to get involved. In 2016, I became national coordinator there. Um, and um, right now, my, my title there is leadership outreach coordinator. I'm being like a mentor for the younger generation. Um, other than that, I'm a radio presenter. I have a radio show in Israeli radio, uh, in which I also hosted you. I had the honor to do that. And um, yeah, uh, I would say a libertarian activist. I, I like to to write about the situation, you know, the, the, the situation in Israel in many different platforms. But I also write about music for some uh, international magazines. And yeah, that's that's pretty much what I do. And you're, and I, I found your framing of of your life and situation and your your countrymen interesting because you are in America we would call you a libertarian um, you would probably call yourself a liberal mm -hmm. um, meaning that you believe in peaceful cooperation and free markets and and trade um, and all of those things are relevant so you've you've been struggling to find that that liberal perspective on this on this age-old conflict talk talk about the tension there well yeah it's you know um we we recently started a campaign for sfl israel called uh, liberal under conflict which is meant to basically explain um ourselves you know i it it, it became very common um, in in the past let's say 10 years uh, for Israelis to to do what we call Israeli explanation, and it's 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 a very hard thing, you know. First of all, to 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 explain what it what is what it's like to be to be an Israeli to live in this conflict and in this situation, but it's it's even more hard when you know like if if you if you compare the the, the amount of Jews in the world to the amount of Muslims. You know, and you would uh, tend to say that um, each side would support, you know, the the um, narrative of of its own party. So it it would be really hard to to you know to even start explaining Israel in a way that would be um, effective. So what we did um, in 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 SFL Israel lately was to to do what we call you know it's not Israeli explanation it's to just to explain what it's like to be a supporter of of free market and 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 um, libertarian or lib classical liberal ideas and uh, and then to 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 live uh, in in a place where th those ideas are really hard to 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 apply you know because you know of course we want you know, free movement of, of, of people and, and goods and, you know, and, and, uh, and free cooperation between people. But it's really hard to live in, in, in a place where you know that if you, there are walls and if there were not walls, you know, if the, the, those walls uh, wouldn't have been there, then we would um, experience the, the same terror attacks we experienced in the past. 
so we we basically focus on on trying to explain that and also other um you know other other stories that don't get uh, enough spotlight in in mass media you know um the uh, probably um you and your um listeners heard about the the, the riots in in many mixed cities in Israel and also in a town called Batyam, which is mostly an Israeli city, but it's located uh, right next to Jaffa, which is the um, old old town of Tel Aviv, and, and, and it has a, a very large uh, Arab population. So um, there, there have been uh, an attempt to, to, to commit a lynch against uh, one Arab guy, and they, they broke some, some glasses of shops. So it was important for us to tell, the, and of course, this this uh, night and these stories, uh, you know, got got a lot of uh, media coverage worldwide. But you know, I, I haven't seen one um, coverage of the stories that that happened the day after, you know, and the day after, um, you know, locals from Batyam who were not involved in in the, these riots because they. You know they don't support it, and it was probably like a group of uh, outsiders and radical people that you know that are not were not uh, involved in any conflict between uh, people from Batyam and Jaffa. You know just came to to show support um, and and help the the shop owners that that were uh, harmed from from the riots. You know they helped them clean the place. They even uh, collected money in order to cover. The, the expenses and the damages, you know, and these this voluntary cooperation is I think it's amazing and uh, I, you know it, to me it's so unfortunate that the world um, you know do, do, doesn't look at that. It strikes me uh, you said in one of your Facebook posts that these that the riots uh, particularly were were worse than you had ever seen and maybe the worst that have ever been. Um, and I, I am thinking about the, the attack on that ice cream shop and it strikes me that there's for, for Americans, there's sort of an analog in some of the riots that are now happening in the United States between Antifa and, uh, let's say white nationalists for a, for yeah. lack of a better way to frame it. And, and it seems like you also have radical instigators representing both sides that that want to inflame other people and whenever someone is killed um people that were wanting to cooperate get get drawn into the to the anger mm, yes yes indeed um well i can say you know it's you know looking back two uh, two weeks ago i was i was very worried about the situation about the things i saw you know because it you know, these are not the things that usually happen when you walk around uh, Israel, and especially the, the, the center of Israel. Um, but, I mean, when you compare it to, to, to the situation that took place um, around 20 years ago during the Second Intifada, it was, back then it was very, like, the, 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 the tension was very high. I, I remember what it was like um, growing up, you know, in Israel back then. I remember that you know it was frightening to to even go on a bus or to go to a shopping mall because you you never know if a, um, a, a terrorist would have come to you know to 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 commit a you know a suicide bombing attack. So we we don't have these things nowadays in Israel, and um, you know back then we didn't have the wall between Israel and the West Bank, so it was pretty easy for uh, terrorists from from the West Bank to to enter Israel back then not to mention that Hamas had much more influence uh, in the West Bank back then so you know to to me it, it reminded me of 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 that situation but in, in a very let's say different way you know back then you would see um, it, like we had um, terrorists coming, you know, you know, with like single terrorists uh, coming to a, a shopping mall or a bus or something like that. But then all of a sudden we had riots, you know, we had rioters, we had groups of people 
angry people that, that, that came and started uh, attacking innocent civilians from both sides. And yeah, it was very frightening. Um, I'm happy to say that it seems like we are, you know, it's, things are calming down. Uh, um, you know, we, we, you, like we haven't experienced uh, riots besides uh, the situation in Jerusalem, which is complicated in itself. And earlier today, there was um, another uh, terror attack, like a stabbing attack. Um, um, a terrorist uh, stabbed a soldier and, and uh, another guy. And that's unfortunate. But again, these, these cases are pretty rare, um, luckily. And, you know, ideally, we would want them, you know, not, not, to, not to exist at all. But overall, you know, like the, it, it seems like things are, are gradually getting back to normal especially in mixed towns and in Tel Aviv and in the center of Israel. That's, that's good to hear. Let's, uh, let's take a step back and sort of walk people through the specific events that led to all of this. Um, and let's start with the evictions in East Jerusalem, because mm -hmm. I, th I think that's what you were referring to uh, just earlier. Um, Tell, tell me specifically what happened and and maybe go back. I mean, you unfortunately, like all of these conflicts, you can go back to the 1800s if you really want to exactly. understand the, the, the family and property rights associated with with this dispute. But but explain to people who, who don't know what's going on in East Jerusalem, what what the trigger was. Yeah. Um, so I, 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 I would briefly explain the case. Um, mainly because, you know, I, I, I read about it um, pretty much, but it's still quite complicated, um, you know, legally speaking. So, as, as you said, um, back in the, um, in the 19th century, um, a few Jewish families purchased um, um, lands in, the, in this area called today uh, Sheikh Jarrah. There, there is um, a grave of a um, um, very, very important uh, Jewish rabbi in, in, in this area. So, you know, they, they, they wanted to, to, to purchase land there. Um, back then, uh, obviously, you know, there, there wasn't really, really a state. It was uh, like the whole of what, what is now Israel uh, was controlled by the Ottoman Empire. Um, later on, after the, the, um, the First World War and then the, the, the second one, um, um, you know, like uh, pa Palestinians uh, tried to, to uh, take over these lands and, um, and eventually they, um, they evacuated Jews from, 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 from those lands. Um, and basically the the you know like the the, the next generation of, of owners who uh, legally inherited those lands um, went to to court with it and you know uh, and you know applying for um, you know getting getting their lands back and then um, in the, the, this whole thing started uh, you know it, and it, it was a very long legal conflict Um you know, they, they, they had proofs of, of all, you know, they had all the certificates showing that the, they, they own those uh, lands. And it's important to mention that those lands are not located in like a, a rural area next to Jerusalem or something like that. It's, you know, it's in East Jerusalem, but it's a pretty central area. Uh, for example, um, uh, Frederick Newman, Newman Foundation's uh, offices are located in the in exactly in this area. You know, for those those who know uh, Frederick Newman uh, Foundation. So um, the 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 court um, try to try to solve it with you know some some compromise. You know, they 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 suggested a few few solutions. Eventually. Um, you know, the, the parties did not accept these solutions. Like one of them was, you know, very, I would say fair, you know, they, they just offered them to just, you know, 
to pay rent and still live in this area. I'm talking about the, the Arabs, the Palestinians who live there. Um, unfortunately, because the, you know, no party accepted the, those, those uh, proposals, so the court had to rule in favor of, uh, of the Jews to, you know, to, to return those lands. So when the media um, show it as, you know, as a, as a case of eviction, so it, I'm, I, I'm not sure if it's the right way to frame it. Although, you know, to being fair about it, it, it is true that um, the laws that apply um, for Jews and Arabs are not exactly the same in this regard. But it's a, it's a, it's a very uh, difficult legal, legal situation. So I, I'm not sure if I, I'll be able to, to explain it, you know, just in, in a few minutes. But this is pretty much the, the, the background of what happened. And when, you know, the... the um, uh, after after the the court's judgment, um, so you know many Arabs came to to this area and started uh, protesting in Sheikh Jarrah, and also they took it to Al Aqsa Mosque uh, because Al Aqsa is always um, a, an area of conflict. You know, like Al Aqsa is is um, officially uh, controlled by uh, the Jordanian Waqf, so it's not really. You know, it, it is a part of Jerusalem, but you know the the, the Israeli authorities don't don't have any um, legal control there. So it's it's it the, there are often some disputes about it when Jews want to to visit uh, the mountain, which is sacred for for them as well. You know, the Jews believe that this is where the the second temple was. So. Um, that that's that's pretty much the, the 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 background of the situation. If you have any like like follow up questions about it, I'll be happy to answer. Well, that that was uh, that was the rationale for Hamas launching missiles. Is that true? Um, you know, they 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 definitely use that as an as an you know like an excuse or or the reason for for starting this uh, these riots and or like the you know. Start, started to, to, to fire rockets, and in parallel, uh, we, we, we had the riots that, that took place. And they definitely said that, you know, like when they first launched the, the missiles, they aimed it towards Jerusalem. And it's really far from Gaza to Jerusalem. Usually they would uh, fire uh, towards the, the south of Israel, or even Tel Aviv is, is, is much closer. But they fired at first to Jerusalem because they said, yes, we want to protect uh, Jerusalem or we want to, to defend the right of, of, uh, of Palestinians over Jerusalem. And so, but Israel, of course, has a very sophisticated uh, um, system, yeah, the Iron Dome. system. Yeah. Um, so, so, so luckily most of those missiles don't land. So it, it strikes me as, as, and again, I'm speaking as someone that doesn't, I'm not that um, informed on the ancient history of this conflict, but it it seems purposefully provocative. They wanted to start a fight. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's that, that's how it seems to me as well. And the the and and the radicals on both sides seem to feed and grow um, from the violence. And and uh, and Hamas has gotten stronger um, every time that. Uh, Israel responds in kind is that that's probably a horribly gross overstatement but it it seems like that was their purpose here yes yes I mean <laughs> you know I, I I you know I can't read their thoughts and I don't know what what exactly they were thinking but you know this this conflict as you said it's not new it's you know it, it goes back way back in time but you know those conflicts, those like Hamas firing rockets. It's not the thing that started. You know, like this year, as everyone knows, it it started a long time ago. It actually started um, in the end of the the you know like in, in, in like around 23 years ago, I think. So back then, uh, Israel still um, had a standing in Gaza. And um, in 2005, uh, Prime Minister Ariel Sharon decided to, um, to, you know, to transfer Gaza 
you know, to 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 take out all of the, um, you know, to to remove all the the, the Jewish uh, uh, towns that that were in in Gaza Strip and give it back to the Palestinians in order to to promote the the peace process and to stop this you know this case of uh, Hamas firing rockets from there and you know like uh, uh, what what happened afterwards was that Hamas only um, you know had had a stronger influence and eventually it uh, it took over the, uh, the the Gaza Strip and ever since they they are firing rockets you know every every few months usually it's uh, they as i said they aim it towards the uh, the south of israel but you know it's we we uh, you know every, every few years we experience something like what we experienced um, in the past two weeks so some of my libertarian friends uh, criticize netanyahu specifically as someone that's not interested in the peace process that you just referred to is that, is that a fair criticism or is is the peace process impossible you know i i i try not to deal with the the political side because i know it will be like the, the whole situation will be challenging for every prime minister but if we look at the facts we we can see that in the in the past year netanyahu uh, was involved in four uh, peace agreements with with arab uh, countries you know um not not only that um, netanyahu declared uh, more than one time uh, that that he is interested in the the two state solution um they also tried to promote lately the um, the, the the proposal um, offered by uh, President Trump. So, you know, I, I don't I don't think it would be a fair criticism in that sense. Um, it is true that that Netanyahu, um, you know, doesn't um, officially um, contact uh, Mahmoud Abbas lately and the Palestinian uh, leadership, and and you know and, and try to to renew a negotiation process. But you know, uh, then again, I'm not sure if if it's all, like. I, I, unfortunately, I, I see most of the criticism. Um, um, you know, they 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 mostly criticize Israel, but they don't uh, criticize the other side, which is also like they they also have responsibility in you know in in reaching some sort of a solution. So you you spoke earlier about your your dad and the the business relationships and. And the economic cooperation and basically the free trade um, that he has with with his Arab neighbors. Um, what is the what is the classical liberal answer to um, boycotts and economic sanctions? I guess I guess those are two different things. But let let's start with economic sanctions because I want as an outsider looking at this and someone that has been highly critical of of lockdowns under covid um, because of the devastating economic consequences particularly in communities at the very margin where where eating is not not guaranteed it strikes me that this is all happening in israel and and gaza at a moment where um, the economic situation is incredibly precarious. And the mm -hmm. question of whether or not people will be fed is a, is a real thing. Um, part of that is lockdowns, and Israel was very aggressive on that. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but, but the other part is the economic sanctions that, mm -hmm. that are supposedly going to make things better. What's, what's your take on that? Mm -hmm. Well, that's that's a great question. It's it's very complicated. I'll I'll try to to explain my position, and I hope I won't be misunderstood, because obviously I don't support any um, collective sanctions or or anything like that. But if you look at Gaza, you know I I'm I'm trying to to separate Gaza from the West Bank because I think it, you know the 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 situation in in those two areas is is, is pretty much. Uh, Different, but if we look at Gaza, uh, we had um, a, a checkpoint that was pretty much open to movement of um, of goods and and also people, you know, back in you know like uh, until 15 years ago. 
Uh, but because of uh, the terror that Israel experienced, they, they had to, to, to close this border and restrict the movement of, of uh, people for sure and, and goods as well. Um, it's also important to mention that, that Israel found and Israel has proofs of that, you know, that, um, it, you know, in, in, in a few uh, containers, containers of, of goods that uh, were supposed to be delivered to, to Gaza and, and went through the Israeli ports, um, the, um, uh, weaponry and, and uh, other, um, you know, uh, um, um, goods that are meant for the, the you know, the, the terror, um, um, like goods that, 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 that can be used to, to, to uh, commit terror attacks against uh, Israelis um, were found. So that's, that, that, that's a very complicated situation. And also, you know, like the, the whole situation in Gaza is complicated because there is a, a, actually a, like a, a whole town underneath Gaza, um, you know, with, with tunnels and where, where they also um, trans, um, tr they, they, they transform or transfer um, um, weapons and, and missiles uh, from over there. So, and they used also like, um, you know, like materials that are meant to, to build uh, buildings, you know, and that, that's what they officially said. They used they used it you know to to build those tunnels so it's a very complicated situation and you know I'm 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 not sh not exactly sure what what can be done about it currently you know because Hamas Hamas's um, control over Gaza is is so strong and it's it's really hard to separate um, like Hamas from from the people who live there unfortunately it's it's very unfortunate um, yeah. but if if we look at the West Bank you know it's, Thinking about the West Bank as, as an example, you know my uh, my town is located next to an, a Palestinian town uh, called Kalkilia, and this town uh, it's 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 actually a pretty big city, and it um, used to be controlled by by Hamas as well, um, you know back back in the days, and I remember during the the second Intifada. Um, they had no electricity um, in the uh, in the evenings. You know, like uh, the um, the army shut down the, the electricity there, and it was uh, you know in, in order to um, you know to, to 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 have some operations to 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 catch terrorists. Um, after a few years, when 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 this took place. Um, the cooperation between Israel or Israeli security forces and uh, the, the Palestinian police and their uh, security forces um, got better, and they uh, managed to remove uh, Hamas from this uh, from this town. Nowadays, it's one of the the the, the most developed towns in the West Bank. Um, they have, a, a, you know, like because. N Palestinians don't don't live only in the West Bank. It's, uh, again, you know, to me, for me, it's trivial, but not not everyone uh, is aware of that. Uh, so um, Arabs from from Israeli Arab towns are going every weekend to to visit and shop there for groceries, and you know they they have strong relations, and you know it's pretty much open. You know there is a checkpoint in in the entrance um, of this city, but you know it, it got so much, so much uh, more developed, and um, I have a friend from there. He he moved to Berlin, but I remember he told me that you know about about his experience in in, uh, in checkpoints. You know, like he said that um, you know it, when he gets to the checkpoints to move to the Israeli border to the, to the Israeli side to to work, um, he sees people like he used to see people every morning from um, other villages. In, in Palestinian areas, and he said, like, I I don't feel the the the, the same as those people. Those people are so old-fashioned about like the, the the way they 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 act, and you know. So it can show you that you know that 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 those areas who um, were um, brave enough to remove terror from 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 there. Um, you know, manage to, to, to experience a great economic development and also social development. 
And yeah, that and it 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 it's interesting that you 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 basically suggested that this was a generational thing, and that's the the real risk of um, inflamed conflicts is that um, we could be creating a new generation of people that want to fight instead of cooperate. I still remember when Terry and I were were there of January of last year. Um, we would stay up late into the night drinking delicious Israeli wines and and trying to solve the Middle East conflict, <laughs> which you, you, you need a little bit of wine to do that. But yeah. um, there was, uh, oh, yeah, without exposing anybody, that I heard all these awesome stories about um, um, uh, liberal students on both sides, Israeli and Palestinian, who were actually having conversations. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, naive perhaps, but it, it felt it felt good to hear that somebody was trying. And, yeah. and this is a big part of what you guys are trying to do with, with Students for Liberty in Israel. Is that fair? Definitely, definitely. And, you know, I get to see, you know, like Students for Liberty is, is, is an amazing movement uh, is exactly because of, of what you're saying. You know, one of my best friends from, from this organization is, is Iranian, you know, and I would never, I don't know how otherwise I would have a chance to, to, to even meet Iranian people, you know. So SFL definitely connects uh, between, between young people from, 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 from different areas. I also got to meet a few uh, Palestinians in, in some uh, international student conferences. Always I tried to, you know, to create some, some sort of cooperation with them and um, been refused by them. I, I, I know why, you know, I, I, I know what, what a big risk it, it is for them, you know, if, if they would know that they, there, there is a partnership between uh, Israelis and Palestinians uh, in their authorities, it, it could really be risky for them. And I have many uh, examples showing it, you know, like um, a few years ago, ago I've read that uh, uh, President Peres, when uh, Shimon Peres was still uh, president in Israel, um, he tried to um, uh, to create a term, tournament, football tournament, uh, or soccer tournament for Americans uh, between uh, <laughs> between young uh, uh, Israelis and young Palestinians from the West Bank. And the Minister of Sports of the Palestinian Authority, uh, which is uh, who is who uh, used to be Jibril Rajoub, um, who was also a former uh, terrorist who spent time in Israeli prison, said that. Um, he is not like he, as long as, as he holds this position, there would never be any tournament or any um, match between uh, you know young young Israelis and young uh, Palestinians. And I think you know it's, it's such a big shame that you know a, a, really like this this you know these initiatives don't have any political flavor or like anything to do with politics, but still like lots of local politics is involved in it. Yeah, and that's, uh, and I heard some of those stories. Um, and, you know, in that sense, the, the going back to my, my point, like um, the Palestinian people are not the same thing as the worst elements of Hamas. And mm-hmm. in, in a lot of ways, they're, they're being terrorized alongside of you because they're, they're afraid to, uh, take a position other than anti-Israel. Mm-hmm. It's it's true, and I I saw uh, recently a, a a video of a, a Palestinian uh, opposition leader who said, you know, that this this is the exact problem. You know, what, like when Israel goes, you know, for an operation, you know, to protect its citizens, um, it has no goal of. Uh, releasing the, the the Palestinians from from Hamas and you know like f- from the terror of Hamas and from the corruption of Abbas. That's what he said. And you know it, it, I, I was you know I, I at first I asked myself is it is it Israel's job you know to 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 release those people? I mean why don't they rebel against uh, against the, the, the their their authorities and i mean it is it is unfortunate but I, I do think that this is something we should we should keep in mind that those people um are terrorized as you said and are oppressed 
by their own authorities. Um, so let's uh, let's let's talk about something happy because right. um, you and I happen to both believe that that music, beautiful music, solves all of our problems. Mm -hmm. And when I was on your radio show, I sort of hijacked it, and you 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 love reggae in particular, and I. I played all of these crazy libertarian songs by Rush, it but was great. Uh, but give us uh, give us your pitch for why reggae is the ultimate libertarian music. <laughs> well, first of all, I love music in general, so you know I, I'm always happy to 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 hear new music, and I like to play uh, different kinds of music uh, in my program. Although you know I have uh, you know my my own uh, you know reggae is, is my favorite genre. Um, I, I think reggae is, is the music of freedom, you know, it's, it's, it's a music that, um, you know, was developed by people who were very oppressed, you know, by, you know, as, as by their slave masters when they were slaves or like the, and the next generation after, um, of, of those slaves, you know, like be, became, um, you know, like they, they, and it's something interesting because they see something uh, similar in uh, in Prague, actually. You know, living living in, in Czech Republic, is, you see how those people like admire freedom and liberty. You know, like in in their own lives. You know, like they they don't let any um, authorities um, ruin their lives again. You know, like they they just want to 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 live free. I think it's 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 reflected in in reggae music so much and that's not something i i see in in other genres you know it, it both in the music and in the lyrics definitely isn't prague where they have a statue of frank zappa is that the right city wow you know? i you know i'm i'm ashamed to say that i'm not sure but i'm gonna i'm gonna check it out right after our interview because uh um i i i could be totally screwing this up but i feel like uh vaclav havel was mm -hmm. was a big Zappa fan, and um, Western music, uh, particularly rock and roll, had a tremendous um, instigating factor in the push against Soviet oppression. So, mm -hmm. I think I got the story right, but you got to find the Zappa statue next time you're in Prague. All right, I will definitely look look it up after right after this interview. Everybody watching this is Googling now to see if I screwed it up. <laughs> um, so one, la one last story, and it's, it's, it's going to sound sad, but I think it's happy. A friend of mine sent me a YouTube video of a rocket from Hamas landing in Holon. Am I saying mm -hmm. that correctly? And that's, yeah, a, yeah. that's just like a suburb of uh, Tel Aviv, correct? Yeah, I was born in this city, actually. Okay, and so maybe you've seen this this video, but mm -hmm. like, huge explosion, fire, destruction, and um, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a crowd made video of them following it. And there's a guy sitting at a cafe in his chair, eating his shmarma, um, and everything around his, him is on fire and there's explosion and there's screaming. And it strikes me that um, there are a lot of Israelis that have been born with this. They live through it every day, and in some ways, you you soldier on, right? Well, yeah. I mean, you know, Israel is a is is, is a country of soldiers. You know, even people who you know the the not too many people that didn't spend time in the in the Israeli army, you know, have to you know to to you know defend the right to to live in this country. So. Yeah, you know, like when 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 you're telling this story and like actually this this uh, video and, and and picture of 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 that guy became a quite a popular meme in Israel afterwards in social media. Um, but I'm I'm automatically thinking about the, the the people in the south of Israel who experienced those rockets firing. You know, not not on like like people in the center. You know, we 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 go through it every once in a while. But people who live um, on the like close to the Gaza Strip or in, in cities like Ashdod or Ashkelon, they experience it every few months. And I've I've been told by by many people from from those cities that you know they don't go to shelters anymore when when rockets are being fired because like they cannot go on with it you know like to just 
um, you know, just live in fear all the time. And it reminds me another uh, interesting story, you know, like during the second intifada, at first when there were um, like uh, uh, terror attacks by uh, suicide bombers, you know, every every time it happened, you know, the, the, the TV and radio, they changed their uh, programs, you know, and they played like sad songs. And after after, I think maybe a year, the radio, um, like one radio station, um, had had this campaign. They said, like they they had a jingle saying, um, "We we won't let them um, like uh, like ruin ruin the situation for us. Um, we we're gonna we we gotta keep going. We gotta move on, and we're gonna continue continue play our regular uh, schedule program programs. So." Yeah, that's that's that living in Israel. That's something that's really hard to to explain to outsiders. I totally understand why people from outside, um, you know, they have their own opinions of of, of the conflict. But I really in, want to encourage people to you know to try to learn more about the situation. To ask people who live in this country, it it, it doesn't have to be um, you know necessarily Jews or Israelis or Arabs or Palestinians. You know, just just ask people what is it like to live there, you know, and what what we are going through. Because and unfortunately, the media um, doesn't tell the whole story. Yes, and and I, I think you did a good job of of giving us a perspective on the ground. Is there any way I, I know that you've offered to um, answer questions to anybody that finds you on Facebook? What's the best way for people to find you on social media? Um, yeah, on social media. Well, I I am available in Facebook. You can write uh, Gilda Gan, or I have a, a long name on Facebook. It's a nickname. It's a long story. Facebook don't let me change it, but it's Gil Shady Ranks Jack Gan. Ja is like, like Ja in, for uh, for Jamaicans or Rastafarians. J-A-H. Ja Gan. So um, uh, Facebook w- would be good. You can always email me. My email is uh, Gilda Gan Law, G-I-L-D-A-G-A-N-L-A-W at gmail.com. And you know, feel free to reach out. I would be happy to, you know, to chat with you. Okay, Gil. Thanks for doing this. Stay safe. Thank you, Matt. You too. That was amazing. Where can I get more content just like that? It's a great question. You're clearly a discerning consumer of the best content. Make sure to like the video, subscribe, and click the bell. And if you're consuming podcasts, go to Apple, Stitcher, anywhere you get them. I'm in. Kibbe on Liberty, honest conversations with interesting people.